Welcome back to Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are part of the Fans First Sports Network. You can follow us on our YouTube channel as well at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. I'll be joined occasionally by my football gurus, Paul and Ian. Let's get to it. What's going on, Ram fans? Episode 568 here. I'm going to get into my Rams Up Straight Up picks as already shared on the YouTube channel. And for the record, I have the receipts. The game is behind us, but I did take the Jets. Everything said, take the Texans. All the evidence said, take the Texans. And for that reason, I took the Jets and I got it right. That's coming up here in a second. And before I get to that, wanted to get to some injury news. But before I even do that, how about the Dodgers? They pull it off. You know, that was pretty entertaining baseball. It really was. Yankees, man. Defensive collapse. Dodgers rally and they win it. And you know what? Yeah, obviously, shout out to Freddie Freeman for her stepping up in the World Series. And Otani, he had a quiet World Series, but we're not in the World Series without him. But most of all, how about a shout out to Dave Roberts? He has taken so much heat from Dodger fans and very knowledgeable Dodger fans about how he has handled this team over the years. He called all the right shots against the Padres, against the Mets, and against the Yankees. So I'm really happy for him. If they had not won this World Series, man, he was going to take a lot of heat. But hey, you can't say anything but good things about Roberts, especially how he handled this pitching staff. So congratulations, Los Angeles Dodgers, Dave Roberts, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, Otani, and all of the supporting players, and my favorite Dodger, Kiki Hernandez. A couple of key hits in this one. Los Angeles, the new city of champions, perhaps? We do have some injury news. Well, let's talk about the Seahawks first. The Thursday injury report, DK Metcalf did not practice, so wondering if he's going to be able to play. Now, nose tackle Jonathan Hankins, he did not practice, but that was just for rest. Limited linebacker Dermont Jones, tackle Abraham Lucas, I don't think Lucas is going to play, and defensive end Jaron Reed, he was limited for rest. Now, let's get to the ramps, and I'll save the most significant news for last here. Defensive tackle Neville Gallimore did not practice, a shoulder issue, and cornerback Charles Woods dealing with a toe, and Ethan Evans, an illness, and that illness was serious enough for the Rams to bring in a punter, Ryan Sanborn, out of San Diego via Stanford and the University of Texas, did not get drafted, was in the Atlanta Falcons camp, and then was released. So he's been available for a while. Rams pick him up. He's on the practice squad, so the thinking is if Ethan Evans cannot go on Sunday, they'll activate Ryan Sanborn. And that's a bit of a bummer. Evans had an excellent game against the Vikings, perhaps his best as a pro. Jordan Whittington and Cameron Curl limited, and you know, really need to get Jordan Whittington back, even more so because of what happened with Puka today, Thursday, left practice with a knee injury, re-aggravating that same knee. Now, word on the street is it's not that serious. They'll reevaluate tomorrow. Don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I certainly hope so. I almost feel like the Rams should just sit down Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua until an hour before the game. Let them sit in a hot tub somewhere. I'll send the limo. Get them to the game. How much do these guys need to practice? They've both been so beat up looking like they're healthy now, and then a minor setback, hopefully a minor setback for Puka Nakua. And that's why, even if he can go, got to do more of what they did last week. Let's not run these guys out there for 97% of the snaps. Rotate Jordan Whittington, Tutu Atwell, Demarcus Robinson, obviously, even Xavier Smith and Tyler Johnson. We have a great wide receiver room, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, We don't have to lean on them virtually every snap, especially if we go 12 personnel opportunities to get an extra tight end in and maybe sit down Puka or Cooper on occasion at least. And I have a feeling that's the direction the Rams are going. Load management for Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. But first things first, 
Let's hope Puka can go Sunday. He was such a game changer for this Rams offense. Now, if Cooper Cup goes, hey, that's a big deal too. But having both of them is extra special. And by the way, the Rams did release wide receiver Sam Wigless from the practice squad to make room for the punter Ryan Sanborn. So let's get to those Rams up straight up game picks as shared on the YouTube channel. Posted this before the Jets Texans game where I did pick the Jets, by the way. So I'm one up already. Let's get to those picks. I'm on a little bit of a roll, widening my gap, my lead over Pete over at CBS Sports. Let's check in and see how we how it went last week. Um, let's see. I w- went 11 and 5, 11 correct, 5 wrong. Pete broke even at 8 and 8. I thought he had some strange picks. So on the year, I have an 8 pick lead, 74 correct, 49 wrong. He is at 66 and 57. We had disagreed on five games last week, and four of them broke my way. I had the Rams, Cardinals, Falcons, and Commanders, and the Cardinals and Commanders both broke my way extremely late, so I'm kind of lucky on those. And Pete had the 49ers, whereas I had the Cowboys. That was the one that broke in his favor. And, you know, I guilty as charged. I was picking with my heart, not my head on that one. Holding out hope the Cowboys were going to bounce back that week, week eight, against the 49ers. It did not happen. Should have known better. So let's get into our week nine picks. Who do we have? We have the Texans at the Jets minus two. So the Jets are favored by two. That kind of surprised me. Jets lead the series seven wins, three losses. And maybe that point spread is due to the loss of Stephon Diggs. Texans are going to be hurting there. And this Jets defense still pretty rugged, pretty good. Still surprised that Jets are favored. And, you know, this is one of those games. I was talking to my special assistant about this. And everything says, take the Texans. Take the Texans in the points, especially. So something's something's up. I, I smell a rat in Denmark. And I am taking the Jets. And originally I was going to take the Texans. Roll them with the Jets, though. So that's my pick. Cowboys at the Falcons. Falcons favored by two and a half. The Cowboys, winners of the last three between these two. Both defenses have been struggling. This is going to be a high-scoring game, and that's pretty much the consensus, I think. I'm not going out on the ledge. Uh, going, I'm not sticking my neck out making that prediction. It will be a high-scoring game. The Cowboys, you know, it's still getting used to the idea of them not being able to run the ball, and they can't. They're still the worst rushing team in the league by yards per game anyways. And I was originally going to lean the Cowboys again, and, you know, this team is just not good right now. The Falcons, you know, they're atop their division, trying to stay atop their division. I'm taking the Falcons. So two home teams out of the gate here. Broncos at the Ravens. Ravens favored by nine and a half. Now, that spread is a little disrespectful because the Broncos have a very good defense, but they do hang their hat on the pass defense more than the run defense, and the Ravens just pile up the rushing yards. I think this is going to be a low-scoring game. Um, Broncos offense kind of struggling. Ravens defense, not what you'd expect. Uh, it's going to be closer than the, than. I, I guess what I'm getting at here is take the nine and a half points. The Ravens are going to win this, but it's going to be closer than that. Uh, Ravens losers of two straight. Wow, crazy. But you got to love those. Got to love the nine and a half points. Bottom line, take the Ravens straight up. Take the Broncos and the points. Dolphins at the Bills minus six. Now, three. these teams played week two with the Bills winning 31 to 10. In fact, the Bills have won five straight in this series. Uh, Tua is back, but I'm not sure the Dolphins are. Rams get the Dolphins the following week, by the way, on Monday night at SoFi. But this is a big game for the Dolphins. They're two and five. This could be the end of the line for them this season if they can't find a way to win this in Buffalo. Still, I'm taking the Bills. They're just playing too good right now. They're a very good football team. Saints at the Panthers plus seven. These are the two worst defenses in the league as far as yards allowed per game. The Panthers Panthers also have the 
fourth worst offense. So yeah, I'll take the Saints. This could be an ugly game though. Raiders at the Bengals minus seven. Raiders lead the series 21 wins, 13 losses, but the Bengals have won five of the last six and they are the home team. Bengals kind of laid a turd last week against the Eagles, but eventually I think they're going to get rolling and this might be the week. Take the Bengals there. Chargers at the Browns. Chargers favored by two on the road. Two pedestrian offenses. Browns averaging 17.3 points a game. The Chargers 18.9. We used to think of this Browns D as good. We just, just made that assumption, but not so much this year. Chargers, meanwhile, a league best, allowing 13 points a game. Pretty impressive. So, yeah, I'll roll with the Chargers. Browns had an impressive win last week over the Ravens, so maybe they'll stay on track. Maybe they'll surprise us, but I'm locked in on the Chargers in this one. Colts at the Vikings. Vikings favored by five. This game has been flexed to Sunday night, by the way, replacing the Jags-Eagles game. Kind of makes sense. Two pretty good football teams here. This should be a fun game. This is a rematch of another fun game, 2022. The Vikings were down 33-0, to zero, overcame the largest deficit in the history of the league to win 39-36 to 36 in overtime. Now, Anthony Richardson apparently benched out for Joe Flacco, and I don't have the details on this. I didn't see this happen, but apparently Richardson took, him out, took himself out of the game late in the game in a really important game against the Texans, tapped himself out for being exhausted, uh, never seen a quarterback do that. I might be getting that wrong, something something to that effect. But regardless, uh, they are not happy with him in Indianapolis. So the Colts have won six straight in the series, at least up until that 2022 collapse. They had won six straight. Then they lost that one. Uh, this has the makings of a very, very good game. But I'll take the Colts in the points, five points. I'll take the Vikings to win. You know, Vikings still struggling to figure out that left tackle situation with Darasaw out. Remember, he got hurt in the Ram game. Don't underestimate the Colts. Uh, Vikings are in for a fight on Sunday night. Commanders at the Giants plus three and a half. Uh, after that crazy win over the Bears, the Commanders got to be flying high, right? Well, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes the opposite of happens uh, and, you, you know, it kind of come out with a crappy performance, but these are two below average defenses. The commanders can score though, and the Giants, aside from Malik Neighbors, really struggling to move the ball. So let's go with Jaden Daniels on the road over the Giants. This could be a trap game for the commanders though. Like I said, coming off a big win like that, sometimes funny things happen. Patriots at the Titans. Titans are favored. Who would have thought they'd be favored? But they're at home against the Patriots. This game just has nothing to see here written all over it. It really does. No interest in watching this one. The over-under is 38. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to take the Patriots. Uh, I think they're uh, they're going to win this one. But, uh, you know, who knows? Who cares about the Patriots at Titans, to be honest with you? Bears at the Cardinals. Cardinals favored by one. Bears got to regroup after that, man. That loss to the Commanders. How painful must that be for Bears fans? I can't even imagine. I mean, I, I've had trouble sleeping after the Rams lose on a field goal that hits the upright and bounces left, and we lose. To lose like that, man. I remember listening to a Rams-Patriots game. I think it was in the 70s on the radio Hail Mary to Irving Fryer beats the Rams, and oh man, just devastation. It's kind of worse on the radio. Just imagine that, Hail Mary on the radio. Oh man, bad day, bad day for the Rams. Uh, but the Bears, you know, they'll probably re regroup. I hope they do. You know, the Bears win and the Rams win. The Rams are in first place. Can you imagine that? But the Cardinals, very unpredictable. They can be, you know, look really good one week and then not so much the next week. This is the oldest rivalry in the league, by the way, dating back to 1920. The Decatur Staley's beat the Chicago Cardinals 
seven to six. But I'm picking the Cardinals, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. So we'll see how that might, you know, man, it would just be great if the Bears pulled off a win here. And they could. It's kind of a coin flip game, but I'll take the uh, the home team. Lions at the Packers. Lions favored by three and a half in Green Bay. Uh, not sure if Jordan Love's going to be able to go. Two very productive offenses, and the defenses aren't bad either. They split their games last year with the visitor winning both times, and the visitor this weekend is the Lions. This is what Athlon Sports has to say about Jordan Love. There's two quarterbacks in the NFC that get a lot of love, and there is some uh, some ruminations out there that maybe that love is overstated or unwarranted, one being Brock Purdy, the other being Jordan Love. Love is 31st in the league. This is from Athlon Sports again, so shout out to them. Love is 31st in the league among quarterbacks with more than 100 attempts in EPA when being blitzed this season. That's worse than Bo Nix, Andy Dalton, Gardner Minshew, and barely better than Deshaun Watson. And on top of that, Love had to leave Sunday's game after aggravating a groin injury. So if he does play, you know, maybe they're better off with Malik Willis. No, that's being silly. I mean, they, they need Jordan Love to... Um, you know, to have a successful season here. I don't think he's going to be out long. He may even play in this game. But, you know, Jordan Love can at times looks like a great quarterback. But if you look at the analytics, there are some areas of concern there. But I'm taking the Lions in this one. They are just flying high. Uh, I can't believe they barely seem like they're barely missing Aiden Hutchinson. And it's mostly due to this offense, really difficult offense to deal with. And that's why... You know, if you saw my power rankings, they're my number one team this week. And if they beat the Packers, really solidify that. We got the Jags at the Eagles. Eagles minus seven and a half. Eagles coming off a big win on the road at Cincinnati. This is a game that was moved from Sunday night to Sunday afternoon. And I totally get it. History between these two teams. Well, they have no history. Well, actually, they have a little bit of history. This is the eighth time they've played. Eagles lead the series, four wins, three losses. Jags lost one of their best weapons. Man, wide receivers just dropping all over the place. Christian Kirk out for the year. And this is a matchup between the Eagles' ex-coach, Doug Peterson, and uh, the Jags' uh, coach Peterson going up against the team he led to the Super Bowl. Eagles were impressive last week against Cincinnati, and um, I think they're, they've kind of figured it out finally after that dreadful way they ended last year, playing some good football right now. It's going to be the Eagles and Commanders jockeying for first place in the NFC East, and I think the Eagles win this one. Bucks at the Chiefs minus nine. You know, Baker Mayfield will find ways to keep it entertaining. Um, <laughs> he keeps it entertaining when, was, when he's on the sideline even, right? But... Chiefs defense is really what's getting it done for them right now. They have been taking over games, and I'll take the Chiefs. You know, Bucks a little shorthanded wide receiver right now, right? And then we have our Rams at Seattle. The point spread is now in the Rams' favor. I saw it up to two points now. Rams favored by two uh, a few days ago with Seattle by three. So some money going down on the Rams, apparently. Rams have won six of the last 10, 10 of the last 14, I'm sorry, Rams have won six of the last 10 in Seattle, 10 of the last 14. That's a personal note for Terry Bradshaw. Please take note, Terry. Yes, the Rams can beat and probably will beat Seattle in, in Seattle. Seahawks giving up 148 yards on the ground per game, a league worst. And that may be why they traded for Ernest Jones. Bad luck for the Rams. He's on the Seahawks now trying to bolster that defense. And he is going to be fired up, I can guarantee you. The Seahawks passing game is very good. Um, they're averaging 262 yards per game. And you know, they're going to stress this Rams defense. Rams secondary has been playing pretty well. But the Rams have to get to Geno Smith, and I think they will. Going to be a high-scoring game, I think. Probably in the high 20s, someone's going to break 30 in this game, I think. I think it'll be the Rams. 
But this Rams offense, man, it's just not missing any parts anymore. I mean, it'd be great to get Steve Avila and Jonah Jackson back, but the two replacements up front are doing a really, really good job. This offense, you know, I wish if we were getting better play, better separation out of our tight ends, this offense would be bordering on unstoppable. Our tight ends are doing okay. I think we may, maybe need to turn to Hunter Longmore, give him a shot as the number one tight end, see what he can do. Um, I'm not sure that's going to happen, but I'd like to see it. But this is going to be a wild one. It's going to be a strange game. It's in Seattle, Rams, Seahawks. Funny things happen, but the Rams are going to win this game and possibly be in first place atop the NFC West when all is said and done. Here's my Rams Up Straight Up Picks Week 9 out here from Rams Up. That's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.